Homes, located here on the same street in Vallejo, California, make up our first resilient hub, Morningside Botanical Bounty. Chris and Joanna, Carla, Jessica, and Diane. We chose this neighbor team as our first resilient hub group because they really embodied the spirit of the program. They were able to see how this work would seed a larger movement in the community, and they came together to work as a team for this shared vision. Knowing your neighbors and being part of a strong social web is foundational to building resilient communities. And we saw from our work in the Sustainable Backyard Program that permaculture gardens naturally draw people out and provide a great foundation and common ground for getting to know your neighbors. Diane and Carla next door, um, you know, we're all part of this kind of sustainable Solano community garden and they'll send me emails to let me know when I need to prune and, you know, give me different tips and they're there to exchange tools or ideas or, you know, just to talk to. It, it looks very daunting, but you get seven, eight, nine people together and all of a sudden it takes an hour and you're chatting and, and you know, you're sharing food and community and it's a very sort of happy community building experience. The gardens were installed in June of 2019 as part of a series of educational workshops generously funded through a grant from the PG&E Corporation Foundation. This was our first time working with permaculture designer Ojan Mobachahi, and we were so happy to have found him for this project. Designing for something of this scale was no small task, and Ojan was the perfect person for the job. He has a wonderful way of making sure everyone around him is included, engaged, and having fun, which was wonderful to have for this process, which focused on strengthening relationships and building community. Okay, cool. Ojan designed each home to address its unique features and challenges while approaching the homes as part of a single shared ecosystem. He included diversity in the plant varieties chosen for each home to encourage sharing harvests and used unique design elements to both personalize the gardens and seed inspiration that the neighbors could work to replicate. One of the principles is around like small, slow steps. So not, you know, we don't need to do huge transformative change, but we sort of looked at each garden and said, okay, what would be a simple thing we could do here that would make the biggest you know, impact without having to like come and start from scratch or redo everything. Our vision for the Resilient Neighborhoods program is to unite neighbors and working collaboratively with each other and with the community to restore important ecological functions back to our built environment, like producing food, cycling water, filtering the air, and creating habitat, with a particular focus placed on regulating temperature by increasing shade cover to help mitigate extreme heat events, something we're experiencing with increased frequency year after year. Food producing and having shade. But perhaps most importantly of all, our goal was to help build stronger connections among the neighbors who all live here together. Let's start with the easy stuff. What's your favorite part of the garden? Wow. What's your, like, your favorite thing in the garden? Oh. You're a plant geek, so go ahead and geek out on something. <laughs> you know, what I, what I love is how many <laughs> different spots there are. Sort of been cycling things out and trying to figure out what works slowly. We have a lot of bees, um, a lot of butterflies that we see now. Um, so it's nice. It's a lot of activity that we didn't have before with just the lawn. I've enjoyed seeing the, the flowers come up in the garden and watching the cycle since everything went in. Yes, and we're actually, we have some fruit. Well, my favorite part of the garden actually changes. Uh, from day to day or from season to season. The salad was so good. <laughs> I come down and it's so fresh. With the manzanitas um, and the current in the front. The backyard here was driving me to a point of despair. So There was grass over there, um, but yeah, it was just kind of weeds. When we inherited this, it was very extensively planted already, but it was mostly ornamental. So my yard before, it was just lawn, just a plain blank lawn, and we actually spent a lot of time <laughs> taking care of that lawn. I was just like ugly, full of weeds, and just like parched wasteland or flood zone. But it still took a tremendous amount of time and a tremendous amount of water, which I didn't, I knew, but I didn't quite realize. I saw Carla in the street and she went, would you be interested in this 
project? I said, oh, yes. <laughs> The community aspect of the project was also something that, that we were really interested in. You know, just helping us to connect to our the community here in Vallejo. Yeah, this program was a great way to get to know my neighbors, and I really didn't know them very well. And even starting with the application process, which was very collaborative. I enjoyed working on the process of describing what was going on, describing what I'd like or, you know, what would be kind of an ideal situation. We were asked to reflect on our vision for our gardens, our vision for our community. You know, over the years we've had um, new neighbors move in, which has been great, um, but I haven't uh, always gone out to meet them. This allowed us to do that. And we really learned a lot about each other's backgrounds, um, our experiences, our values, and it was also really fun. Well, it was. It was fun to work on their gardens and work on mine. I met really great people I probably never would have met. It was just so much fun having everybody kind of working together and getting to know people. We would have these, you know, fun like picnic lunches. It was just sad. My garden install went in last and so it was hot. <laughs> the camaraderie was really great. Yeah, no, I mean it was lovely. The work days were lovely. Yeah. Um, it was a little hot. I'd like <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's always a balance around like how do we create more shade, especially now that the heat island effect and climate change is making everything hotter and hotter every year. So shade is like a really important community service that we're providing by, by planting trees. This is another tree that we planted just on the south side of Carla's house. Um, it's a Chautauqua tree. It's going to get very large and has these beautiful flowers. So in addition to the, you know, the obvious effects that it has of providing shade for the house and um, pollen for pollinators, um, it's also providing a lot of like ecosystem services, right? So like I said, the, the insects and the birds that are going to be able to benefit from this tree but it's also building soil and adding moisture to the air, right? So it's actually sequestering carbon um, and it's also pulling water up through the ground. So instead of having that water just evaporate into the sky, it's bringing that up, storing it in the ground, storing it in its body, and then through these leaves, it's reduce, it's releasing, it's transpiring all this, this moisture. Now, when we have a community with lots of trees, all those trees are releasing moisture into the air and actually increasing the humidity in the area increasing the amount of fog and clouds in that area. Um, forests actually generate a lot of the clouds, a lot of the rain that falls on them. So when we deforest an area like these communities we often live in, we're reducing the amount of clouds and the amount of rain that we get. And that's a really big problem in areas with drought. So by planting trees in large swaths in the communities, we're actually increasing the level of moisture in the air, increasing the carbon in the soil, and increasing the amount of water that's coming back so in addition to the shade that this tree provides, the moisture and the cloud cover that it helps produce is uh, helping reduce the heat island effect and the, the temperature of the area. You know, all, each homeowner had a different sort of perspective they were coming from. Like the homeowner here wanted very specific California native plants and was very like particular about that. So we were able to integrate that with the plant list. Um, with other homeowners, it was more like there was a lot of stuff already going on in the garden, so integrating that kind of feedback. I had some ideas, but then the garden said this, that, or the other, right? So, And thinking about it as an ecosystem, like we didn't do everything at every garden. At Joanna's house and Chris's house, they had a big area that we could do a hugel culture, and that inspired um, Carla to do a hugel culture here. This beautiful kind of centerpiece of, of, of the garden. So I really love, love this hugel. It's so much nicer to have, have a, it's a great spot for, for growing things that need a lot of sun. I heard that uh, Carla put one in as well, huh? She yeah. did, yeah. 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 She came and we, we had some extra dead wood lying around. <laughs> now three of you have hugo cultures, right? Because Diane has one also. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, it's spreading. It's yeah. spreading. <laughs> yeah. We did this herb spiral here. So, and this was like, this was a really interesting process because it was like integrating feedback from Carla that she wanted an herb spiral, quintessential permaculture thing. Really like a beautiful feature. 
and integrating you know herbs and annual vegetables which is my favorite sort of way to design resilience in the system you can see this dill is actually self-seeding and we have the second round of dill coming up here which is mm, smells really good wow that makes me hungry <laughs> This is a passion fruit. I found people who had the same ideas about growing food. I actually stole the collards. I stole them from Carla. <laughs> <laughs> you know, kids would walk by and pick the wild strawberries and eat them. Um, they're very sweet and tart. I love them. The artichokes are really good and amazingly abundant, so I was giving them away to my friends and neighbors. If, if everything that we planted takes off in a few years. I love figs. I love peaches. If we're going to have so much fruit. <laughs> I love the gray water system and we don't refer to doing our laundry anymore. Now we call it watering the bamboo. This is the, the laundry to landscape system, the very easy, simple to install gray water for California homes. And when it starts here with the washing machine, you use like a, you know, biodegradable laundry detergent like she's got here. And then it all hinges on this valve right here. Or when the valve is up, it sends the water here to the the house sewer system. So it can go out to the street if you're watching things with bleach or with things that you don't want to go into your garden. But if you're doing your normal laundry, the valve down here, just like this instruction, here to gray water. So this pipe leads out into the garden. This is the other side of the laundry to landscape system where from the laundry machine on the other side of this wall, the water can either go to the sewer system or it can come out here to the garden. So the water comes out through there and it enters into um, various um, downspouts throughout the garden where um, you know the water pours out into here and there's actually a hole that was dug around this and then backfilled with mulch so that the water can pour out unrestrained so there's a little valve here that can basically allow you to control the amount of water that comes in and out of the system so there's a bunch of these throughout the garden that we'll see but then the water percolates through the mulch into the ground here and it runs 50 feet along the fence and so it's supporting the cypress plants and it's supporting three clumps of bamboo. So I really love having this new gray water system because it means that instead of having to use water from the tap, uh, I get to use water from my washing machine, which is going to irrigate all of my plants in my yard. So my pineapple guava, and I have several fruit trees out here, and all of them are getting water every time I do the wash or my renter does the wash. And eventually, this will cut down on my need to irrigate using fresh water. This is one of the most valuable resources in the garden, rainwater that's captured in this gutter here. And instead of sending it off site and into the street like most conventional builders and houses do, we're capturing it in through this tube. What this black tube is doing is it's actually bringing it away from the house a little bit because we don't want it to go right into the foundation. Uh, but we don't want to send it off the street either. So right here, this um, leaves the tube right around here where I'm standing and goes into a swale. And it's full of wood chips. Um, which allows the water to continue to flow throughout this whole area. And this is going to improve the quality of the soil and the water um, contained in the soil over time and really allow these plants to thrive with little to zero water. You see the homeowners already reduced their water bill by, you know, their water consumption by, it sounds like, over 80%. You know, this used to be a lawn, which was just taking gallons and gallons of water into the landscape and costing the homeowner a bunch and it would look ugly in the summer. Now this landscape is taking very little water and it's producing food. It's creating habitat for, uh, for animals and, and local plants. This laid the groundwork for, you know, um, creating more connections above and beyond just gardening. We do have a um, local email um, listserv in our area. And I really think that we can build on um, those initial connections and I've had a, a party here to um, celebrate the garden and to thank people for their participation. I'm somebody who like works in the garden <laughs> so like I come out and I like do stuff but it really has been a shift for me like hanging out in the garden with people. Yeah. 
Like really, like this spot is perfect. We just like put our blankets down and you know, people bring their own food and drinks and it just, it's so easy. It just, it all feels very healthy and safe and beautiful.